more than even our president. But I uh, touched on these issues earlier on in the interview, but let me repeat myself since it is not harmful. I told you when we were perceiving Pope, or we had viewed Pope in three ways. One of them is that he is a head of a state. And a head of a state is given a different kind of security. Go anywhere in the whole world. When the head of a state is visiting, he is given secu maximum security. Because not everyone loves that head of a state. It is our record. How many head of states got assassinated in their own countries or when they are visiting? J.F. Kennedy was assassinated. Am I right or wrong? President Reagan was nearly killed. He was shot and wounded. Okay? Abraham Lincoln was, was assassinated. We are talking of Americans. And many, many more. Here in the, neighbor, in our, in the neighborhood, President uh, Kabila, La, La, Lauren Kabila was assassinated. Right? So if you have a head of state, not everyone likes a head of state. There could be some people that are not happy with that head of state and he could be assassinated. That's one. We have a record, Pope John Paul, having been, having survived an assassination attempt on him in 1981. I just mentioned it. All right. So if his predecessor was nearly assassinated, what is the guarantee that he could, he could be assassinated? So we have to put in maximum security not to give any room for any stupid thing to be done on his po on on his own at the Pope. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now let's go back to the challenges that you encounter during uh, your work as SSPDF and the organized forces in providing protection to people of South Sudan. What were the challenges? Thank you very much. I think uh, this will be the last one. Otherwise, unless maybe the viewers are having any questions, of course, there's no work that could be done in any given area without uh, without challenges. Uh, in consultation with uh, those who took part in provision of security, I'd ask them to share with me the challenges that they had experienced in their capacities as the ones that were commanding the joint security forces or we or the security forces themselves that were deployed. And uh, one challenge that came on top of the list was that there was no enough budget allocated to security forces during the purple visit. The budget that was allocated to all the organized forces was too little, bearing in mind that we had started security preparations and operations three days or four days before his visit. Then when he visited, he remained in the country for three days. So we had been on maximum and uh, maximum alert for seven days all right so the money that was given to us was not enough that was the biggest challenge the second challenge was that there were domestic animals that were loitering on the streets of cuba special goods sheep dogs uh, that had a negative impact on traffic flow and those were given the responsibility like personnel from uh, traffic uh, from directorate of traffic and the volunteers that were helping us in maintaining security uh, to deal with that challenge. Uh, the third challenge was uh, the security forces that were deployed got really tired. They had worked, they had overworked for almost for a whole week. Uh, there was an oversight. We did not rotate them. We did not put in place chips. They did not work in chips. Maybe you work for eight hours, another team is, is deployed. So the one that we deployed worked throughout. So at the end of it, we discovered that they were really, really very tired. Uh, another third, fourth problem was on the eve of His Holiness' visit, we held two parades, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. In the afternoon, after we briefed them, they went driving around in the in, in, in town in a show of force. You know, a show of force from a military perspective is used as a deterrent. You know, our security personnel were in their trucks, they were in their uh, taxis with all their gear. So when they drove around Juba, we're showing the people of South Sudan that look, don't temper when the Pope comes 
This is the power that we have with all the organized forces put together. After they, after, as they were going and as they were coming by, we realized that they were over speeding. Um, our drivers, the drivers for different military vehicles, they sped when they were going and they were speeding all over. So when we realized that, we came and told them, look, there are speed limits. So don't, 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 don't over speed. That was one challenge. That was, a, that was another challenge. So basically, we had observed around four challenges. Now that brings us to the second, uh, second, that's the A part of it. B part of it was then how did we address the challenges? Of course, uh, the issue of having insufficient budget was raised by our command, but we were told that there, were, there was no more money. And as a result, we persevered with the little money that was given to us until we succeeded in accomplishing uh, the task. After realizing that, realizing that the drivers were over speeding, we came and briefed them. Our, our chief of defense, our deputy chief of defense forces, uh, our assistant chief of defense force for operations general, Thoi Chan, came and briefed the drivers about the need for them to observe by speed limits. And that were now, when they started deploying, on D-Day and throughout, I'm very sure they observed the required uh, speed uh, speed limit. Uh, the issue of uh, goods, domestic animals loitering around, so they uh, they were cleared. So basically, I'm happy we in the SPDF and the organized forces would like to say a very big thank you to the people of South Sudan for showing unity, for behaving very well. Big thanks goes to the political leadership of this country that the visit, in my opinion, to the condolence message of His Excellency the President uh, to, to the people of Keju Keji and uh, during the purple visit to, to the Republic of South Sudan. And I don't want us to go without touching something about that. Uh, it was really linked by international media houses that upon the arrival of His Holiness Pope Francis, many lives were lost in the Republic of South Sudan one day before his visit to the people of the Republic of South Sudan. So what do you say about that as the spokesperson of SSPDF? And what measures did you put in place to keep protecting people of South Sudan with their properties, given their differences and whatever kind of conflict that they're having. Uh, thank you, Brother Major. To be honest, um, it was been unfortunate that lives were lost um, on the eve of uh, His Holiness' visit. Both lives were lost from cattle herders as well as the host community. It was regrettable. Uh, it was regrettable in the sense that any life lost it is regrettable. And to make matters worse, it had happened at a time when the, the focus of the whole world was on the Republic of South Sudan. Uh, it, 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 it portrayed us in a very negative uh, manner. Uh, but of course, it's a country at war and the country is emerging from war. And that was the bottom line why it's only the Pope came with the other two religions. They recognized that this country has been bleeding for too long and therefore, they needed to be encouraged, to be supported, to be given a spiritual food for them to stop killing themselves. That was the bottom line. Uh, you know, in South Sudan, we have been fighting over one thing or the other. The bigger picture is that this country has been experiencing political problems, political evils, uh, upheavals. But in addition to political upheavals we have been experiencing, our local communities have been fighting one another or each other over a wide range of issues, over grazing lands, over water points, over shared scarce resources. You know, there are fights over different reasons. People live and fight because of an elopement. A young man elopes with a girl, you, you would hear that there was a big fight and this number of people got killed. But of course, they, they are happening as a result of the bigger picture. Politically, the country is not stable, but we shall overcome. What we did when the clashes erupted, 
we have our force that is deployed in KJKJ. Uh, I was able to hear from the county commission and other county officials that they, they help in enforcing and enhancing security. But of course, we have three levels of government. We have the national level, the national government, we have the state government, and we have the county governments. So the KJKJ county government intervened with all the security operators at that level and including our own SSPGF. Thank you so uh, much. But the political leadership is working on it. Thank you so much, Major General, for making it to African Morning Breakfast Show on SSBC. Before I let you go, one minute, your message to the people of the Republic of South Sudan and to your colleague in the Hami, SSPDF, and the organized forces. Uh, I would like to conclude by saying first and foremost to you and the leadership of SSBC, thank you very much for always um, covering the national events with the special focus on SSPDF. And I'm very thankful to the leadership of SSPDF for all, always availing uh, this coverage to, to SSPDF. You have been doing a very wonderful job for the last seven years since I was appointed as the spokesperson. We are in focus simply because of SSBC. Thank you very much and thank you to you. Uh, secondly, once again, let me appreciate the political leadership for making it possible for the Pope and the delegation to visit us. That was a very big political work to convince the Pope to come. Thank you to the organized forces, the leadership of SSPDF under the overall command of uh, Gerald Santino Denwell, the chief of defense forces, and the senior officers he had assigned during the Papal's visit. A special thanks goes to South Sudan National Police under the leadership of uh, General uh, Majaga Kej and the officer that he had assigned to General uh, Akolkor, the Director General of uh, National Security, for excellent work they did, to Director General of uh, External Security Bureau, General Simon Yen Makwaj, he was on board, and to the presidency, especially the presidential. Uh, secret service for a job they did all of us we we put our efforts together coordinated together and did a wonderful job so the, the the group that we should not forget is the media authority under the leadership of uh, honorable alier why he had the biggest work of accrediting over 391 journalists that came to cover the work of the pope including the National Communication Authority, Director General uh, Napoleon Adok. All of us, let me take this opportunity. Congratulations for making South Sudan a very great nation. The Purple Visit was a lead master's of our ability to organize, co plan, coordinate, and all that. The outcome was very excellent. So thank you very much to everybody to the people of South Sudan. Thank you so much, Major General Lord Rai Kong, for making it to SRBC. Go tell your colleague in the army that the people of the Republic of South Sudan were happy with the discipline display in the last three days. But South Sudanese are still looking forward for that discipline in the rest of the lifetime of South Sudanese. Thank and you. And to our viewers, thank you thank so you much, much for following African Morning Breakfast Show.